In places thatched roofs and in Peru uh, at Lake Titicaca they have to replace the floating islands I think every seven years or 15. No, that's Chinese I think. The Chinese had some superb China that they made which traveled all over the world during the I think late 1800s and maybe even earlier obviously for chopping something it might be for cutting who knows butter wheat grasses and of course storage <clears throat> these huge barrels again the barrel maker I can't remember what they call those now certainly an important part of the culture and the economy in those days from the biggest of those barrels to these little tiny ones that probably held a worthwhile warming grog I suspect we're in a more modern building with wood floors and wood siding mm -hmm. an old blunderbuss with the shoes that people made no doubt out of lamb Another influence, probably from Wales bone. Hmm. Notice the embroidery work, something that would while away the long hours and days of winter. Pretty little barrel, isn't it? I'm thinking this is some kind of a lamp, and that pointy thing you pounded into a wall. A chess-like game, or checkers-like game. Notice the beautiful woodwork. Spoons of ivory, I'm guessing, or bone certainly. Almost translucent that one is. A little bowl for something, ah, stoke the fires. These might have even been spear points. Certainly that are embroidering or sewing devices like awls. And there for incising a pattern on leather or wood. I don't know what that long box device is. I think it's for cigarettes or cigars or pipes. <laughs> you can only imagine what some of these things were for. And yet, in their day, at their moment, they were pricelessly important. Or some little quaint, pretty brass thing like that. Scales. And notice this knife that's broken now of some kind of bone or whale bone or something. At the end of this long hallway that spans several of those buildings that we passed earlier, it's interesting, it's raised up, has a wood floor. This might have been, or as it looks, as it was, the sleeping room. Now this may have been for the help, I don't know. Here a larger room, or here a separate room with a desk, and here I would imagine was the overseer or the owner's bed room and office. Much nicer furniture. Notice how the beds have that little privacy drapery, if you will. And here, for washing in the morning, versus those of us who think we need a shower every morning or we can't survive. Old, small, heavy, cast iron, parts of it anyway, sewing machine, spinning wheel, instruments. These were short people because if I walk straight ahead, I will hit myself square above the eyes, directly above the eyes. And here another smaller separate room. And notice that there was room up there for sleeping also, I suspect. Yes, and you can see the foot for getting up there, although I couldn't do it. Some kind of game, chess or checkers type game. 
a food chopper or something else. Some kind of book. These are bed boards. There. There's one for each bed. They normally have the owner's name carved in and the date and so forth. And then they were somehow assembled and used as a table during the day. One of these stones in here is a consecration stone where the Catholics would put water, holy water, for doing their little ritual. It's this one. This one, I think, is a grinding stone. And this would be the handle you would turn like this. But notice using lava, which is easy to carve, would also put all of that stone into your bread, onto your teeth, grinding down your teeth, causing immense pain before you were terribly old. So this would have been the equivalent of an outbuilding. What I wonder was whether these stones were just like shelves, or whether they comprised uh, the entire floor. This might have been an all-purpose machine, but its function was at least that of a lathe, and perhaps served other functions. And it used a trendle so you could have more than one person working both sides. And then here, some kind of device for separating something from something. And some of the basic tools of the labor. No doubt the blacksmith's shop. What they were able to do with what limited resources they had is, I think, fascinating. The complex that we're about to visit is, in fact, the farm and home and church of a priest, his wife, and his family. Here some ranchers are moving their herd of horses to another location. This reminds me of being in Cambodia when I saw some men herding their ducks from one location to another. Just a note, in that last big room at the end of the hall, the sleeping room, the room single room to the right was for the children and the single room to the left was for the priest and his wife. <laughs> 